we have a very interesting session on family business. Uh, uh, in the context of entrepreneurship, family businesses often get, uh, I, I wouldn't say uh, ignored, but they don't get the kind of attention that they, they command. If you think about family businesses in India, uh, almost 80% or 80 to 90% of the businesses that you come across, whether it's the large businesses or the small and mid-sized enterprises, these are family-owned or run businesses. Um, you know, if you think of old school India, uh, the Tatas, Birlas, Ambani's, Mahindra's, these are all family businesses. Um, if you think of the industries that they have been a part of, whether it's telecom, infrastructure, cement, power, manufacturing, uh, you know, these are old school industries and, uh, that they've all uh, commanded a very strong presence in. It, in fact, their sons and daughters and the second and third generation that have gone overseas to study and have now come back a lot of them don't want to work uh, in, exact, in the same exact role that their fathers and grandfathers worked in. They have aspirations of creating global brands. Uh, they have aspirations of often taking their businesses global, whether it's on the SME side or on the large business side. Uh, no longer do they want to just be a garment exporter and selling to the Gaps and uh, Escadas and Pradas of the world. They want to have their own indigenous brands and put them on the world map. Uh, this generation is very aspirational. Given their learnings from all over the world and the top institutes across India, a lot of them have aspirations to become the next Kunal Behel and uh, so on and so forth. In fact, Kunal comes from a very, uh, he is the founder of Snapteal. He comes from a very lustrous uh, auto components family business and decided not to join his father uh, and his elder brother in that business and then decided to create uh, an online e-commerce venture which has pivoted a few times and in the current shape and form is Snapteal. Uh, and that is the rising trend that you see across India today. A lot of these entrepreneurs in family businesses who had the chance to sit on the golden chair and just take over their family business and add another factory and continue to sell cement and so on and so forth, they decided to bring some of these best practices of the world to their family business and often in an entrepreneurial role. Uh, so today we'll be discussing some of these issues. What does it mean to join your family business? Uh, or we have uh, Lohit who's going to talk about, you know, what does it mean to work with family businesses as clients? Um, and what are some of the changes and nuances that you're seeing around this? And then for the audiences, I, I think some of you may come from family businesses or have clients as family businesses. What are some of the best practices to continue to work and grow with, uh, with these family businesses? Uh, so on that note, I would like to invite my co-panelists to maybe give a brief introduction about themselves and we'll dive into the discussion from there. So Lohit, we'll start with you. Thank you, Pankaj. Um, so I'm a first generation entrepreneur, no relation to any of the family businesses as such. So I'd like to ask you how many of you um, are running their family businesses? Okay, one person in the crowd, that's brilliant. Two, three people, okay, that's still quite good. Okay, how many of you related to education business? Okay, so I run a company uh, called Fizoc. Um, which is in the education sector. And uh, can we make it a little interactive? Hmm. Uh, and I'll explain to you what we do by asking a question. Can we have the lights in the house? Thank you. All right, uh, so I'm going to ask you a question, a question from standard fourth, which you have you know, studied in your school. Okay, now everybody is very sitting uptight. Okay, so I ask you a question. If you have the answer, raise your hand. If you don't have the answer, that's all right, okay? And don't ask anybody. Uh, which was the first satellite to orbit around the Earth? If you have the answer, raise your hand. Which was the first satellite to orbit around the Earth from class fourth? Okay, and how many of you do not know the answer? That's frankly, honestly, do not know the answer. Right, and it's amazing because in whichever, do I ask a teacher in a, in a teacher's conference or um, students or people in general, it's almost around 95% who says, okay, I don't know the answer. And 5% would make an attempt. Um, so did you say you don't know the answer? How many of you don't know the answer? Okay, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you some. Okay, so can you name any of these satellites which you've heard of? Oh. <laughs> Have you heard of Moon? Yes. <laughs> Was that the first satellite? Because obviously we could not have had uh, an artificial satellite before Moon, right? And you know that Moon is a satellite. So would Moon be the first satellite to orbit around the Earth? Yes, me. Okay. okay. So what happened exactly was the moment I asked you a question, and when it is an academic question, our mind is trained 
to go back to memory. If I asked you anything about investment, you'd be like, okay, let me think and give you an answer. But when I asked you anything academic in nature, you went back to memory. Has my teacher ever told me the answer before? And that's what happens with adults, with teachers, or with students. And that's what my company does. It breaks that norm of rote learning by bringing in different um, styles of education delivery. Now, what we're doing uh, in India has not been done in the world before, which is why in the past two years, we've got a lot of recognition from BBC and many other media. Uh, so we've launched something called as Flip Classroom, wherein we set up a Hollywood-style studio in the school. And we train the teacher to deliver content in more analytical manner, no rote at all. The content is recorded uh, like a movie, 10-minute movie for every chapter. It's given to the students to watch at home so that the student comes prepared. Instead of watching any other video, he watches the academic video, which is made, in, uh, made like a movie. And when they come to the class, the teacher engages them uh, by creating a real rainbow in the classroom to explain how rainbow is being formed or, or to create a simulation of satellite when satellites are being talked about. So we're working very closely with the boards like CBSC and ICSC and also with family businesses, schools, like Pudar chain of schools. Now, uh, which is what I was discussing with Pankaj, that this is where we could talk about on how, um, uh, you know, the new technology which comes in and uh, when the uh, family businesses which have been running really well uh, since past 50, 60 years, how do they adapt new technology and how do new companies help them transition from the old um, uh, style of teaching to the newer styles of teaching? That'd be good. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Lohit, for that kind introduction. Now, uh, if I can pass on the mic to Ayan to give a brief description about himself and, and his business. Hello, good evening, everyone. I'm Ayan Chavlu, founder and CEO of Asian Fox Development. Actually, I'm founder and CEO of four companies. One is Asian Fox Developments, that's an IT company. We have global clients, uh, US, UK, India, and multiple locations. Even though I have a one another company that is glo Global Web Mount, that is a web services company, that is a very small, uh, that is basically making clients. Global Web Mount is providing domains, okay? We provide directly domains. We don't uh, target money in that. We, don't, we just make clients, okay? But our main, con main company is Asian Fox Developments. We provide website development and designing, software and app development, DDoS attack protections, to big companies, small companies, startups, Indian government, uh, Indian army, Bollywood movies, and uh, everyone. So now, uh, first, I would like to thank uh, Franchise India for calling me here and uh, get in touch with you. So I'll tell you about me and my ventures. Yeah. Uh, at the age of 14 years, I have started my first uh, startup website. Okay. That was Group for Buddies. That was a simple social utility website. And uh, just like another website, Facebook or anything, okay. Uh, for example, Pinterest, YouTube. We have some fun functionality like f uh, YouTube, even the knockery.com, because we, uh, over there, we have portal for employers, uh, employees, everyone. So the next is, uh, I'm here today to share my views and thoughts based on my experiences with you all. So I say always focus on end goal and about the entrepreneurship. I say always focus on end goal and see how the opportunity in your challenges will take you for. I feel there's an entrepreneur in everyone over here. Okay, how many you feel from, uh, from age of 20 uh, started thinking that I will be entrepreneur? Can you raise your hands, please? Okay, just one, no, two, okay, okay. Okay, so, and who wanted I want to work in MNC? Please raise your hands. Anyone? Okay. Okay, so I feel uh, there's an entrepreneur from this uh, age of 10 years. Everyone knows what is entrepreneur, a businessman. Uh, from small, small, even if you go to any market, you see the salesperson is uh, doing the deal with your mother, and you see, you have some experience of marketing. Okay, it helps you when you grow up. So, and yeah, I think sometimes life may challenges us in ways we cannot anticipate. But inside those experiences, there are some secrets that help us to be not only a better entrepreneur, but also a better person. For example, uh, there are some experiences, some good experiences, some bad experiences for us in our life. And uh, till my age uh, of 17 now, 
uh, I've experienced both very much with, uh, with my clients, with my, uh, with my employees. I've seen many. So to get success, the first thing is believe in yourself and believe in your dreams. Okay, some, some people are who only dream. They, uh, they don't have courage to implement in their life what they think. And uh, first is that if you want to be an entrepreneur, just implement that idea into real life. If you don't implement, then there is no, that, that is a wastage of your dreams. Okay. So that is to get success, believe in, your, believe in yourself and your dreams, then see how your future is bigger than where you are and where you were. According to me, we sh all shall, uh, we all should keep knocking, keep trying, and no matter how long it takes, days, months, years, maybe several years, four years, five years, but as every entrepreneur have made some ventures, okay, some were successful, some were not, okay, and uh, for, for example, Facebook, Fa uh, Mark has uh, done, I think, two or three ventures, Facebook was the only venture was the successful, other was failed. So, no, ma yeah. Uh, as for my experience, opportunity really comes itself and knock your door. And uh, uh, if you are a startup, you think that uh, you don't you don't do marketing. Okay, business is based on marketing, and you think that client will come to you and say, "I want to buy this service." That is not possible because he don't know you. And if you are a big company, you are MNC, you have some experience, you have some good clients who can refer uh, some client. That is the big business is a chain of reference. Okay, if you made some good uh, clients, they will obviously refer to someone. Those are your future clients. Okay, so the first thing in the company we target is uh, satisfactory to client. Okay, if he's, satisfi he's satisfied with the, our services, with our support team, and then we are happy. Okay, but if we get the feedback that your support team has not done that or anything, that is the main concern. I'll say do whatever you want, don't limit yourself, don't uh, put barriers in your dreams with true belief in yourself. You will definitely succeed. There is no, uh, there's no uh, you can say, a barrier or no one, okay? No, uh, you're, uh, not even your parents will, if you have a clear dream and you can show them what uh, exactly I will gonna do. You just can't say, I, I haven't told my mother that uh, I want to be an entrepreneur. I explained what I wanted to be. Okay, I, I, I want, to become an entrepreneur, but in which field? You have to clear that. You have to explain that what will be the benefit of that, why I am, uh, why I am uh, doing entrepreneurship with schooling. Okay, so that you have to clear with your parents, your relative, who, uh, who is your guardian, okay? There are some startups uh, at the young age of 19, 18 in India, uh, but I think uh, the parents are not uh, they want uh, them to be doctor or engineer. They want them to, uh, obviously they are. Uh, they want that uh, is, uh, their child have, should have a secure future. But uh, that is uh, something which is uh, which you have to think and you have to uh, make prepare for you that uh, you have to take care of your parents okay you can you can't say that now i just want to do that or your, my parents are saying that i want to be doctor but i because if you become a doctor you will you will don't have a passion for doctor you will just doing your job there is no interest in that so uh, make your uh, dreams come true okay then uh, i suggest you if you are a startup uh, calculate all the risks for, uh, for example, when I started ventures, uh, there were some risk, okay? Uh, I, you just have to think about that. Think in real life, don't do just practicals on the risk. Think about that and just take the ne next step. If it's a running business, if it's a startup, anyone. You might have the, uh, the marketing part in the entrepreneur. Uh, if you don't do the marketing, you don't have a clients, then there's no use of your business. It's worthless because maybe you have the greatest product or service in the world, but if nobody knows about, you will never succeed. And uh, when, you, when you master the ability to market your product, company, and brand, see how you will have customers and partners flooding in to join. For example, you do market, marketing, there are uh, several, in, uh, several industries. The first industry is, I think, uh, that is uh, outdoor, okay? Then after that, uh, online. 
some uh, there are some of our clients uh, who do both okay but uh, for the startups they have very uh, less without uh, without venture capitalist or anyone they have very uh, less budget okay for ex approximately of 2 lakh or that, that's it okay then uh, what they can do is they can just uh, do the online marketing on All, uh, now these days the online resource is the biggest marketing platform okay you can do marketing on internet you can do on uh, apps or any anywhere so uh, yeah then uh, yeah as i have done uh, to promote my company i started my own media and marketing company named mind in advertising we do all kind of marketing for example email marketing seo search engine optimization smo social media optimization sms marketing even though outdoor marketing every kind of tv and radio advertising so I think only knowledge or ed only education can't do anything in life uh, that you can say that I, I, I will do uh, just uh, the B.Tech or I will, I will join some MNC. If you don't have some passion in your life, it will, your life will be uh, just like a puppet. You are running on your employer's uh, thing. You, do, you can't innovate anything. What they will say, you just have to do that. So. Thing can implement in your life. Uh, there is no uh, much investment required of any uh, startup. So yeah, but still, uh, knowledge and education are important for everyone. Uh, that's the reason I'm still studying uh, by NIOS, that is National Institute of Open Schooling, after completing my ninth through DPS. Yeah, so. You can have greatest ideas in your head, but if you don't put them into practice, they become worthless. The true mark of success lies in having the courage to invest emotionally, physically, and financially in your ideas. I believe it is important to know which direction to go to. It is your ability not to give up until you reach your goals. For example, there are some startups I know. Uh, they started some gaming website. Uh, they are they are very concerned to me. They are uh, they just opened a new website. Uh, with innovation, not uh, just running websites uh, like Miniclip. Th th those are not copies. They, uh, they have innovated something. But uh, in the middle, they left it. Okay, for, uh, that, uh, they tried for six months and they said that, uh, I don't know, it's not running. I, I'm not be able to make money. Money is not concerned in passion. If you have a passion, then you have to struggle. You have to face sun for that. You have to do everything for your passion. So. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, when obstacles appear, when calls are not returned, remember what brought you uh, brought you here, where you are, in the first place. Uh, it would make no sense for you to give up now. Keep pushing. Keep striving. Keep facing the sun for each rejection. Ask yourself what I can do differently. What can I learn from the situation? Finally, say to yourself, I am better than this. So that's it. Good luck to all. And remember my words, truly believe in yourself and your dreams, that's the key to success. Thank you.